Five Wave family, what's good? Uh, my name is Pastor Devin. I'm excited to be here today. I hope this video is going to be helpful and healthy for you. Uh, I really think it's going to be because we're talking about a nuanced subject and we want to start a series today called Thrive. Now, there are three ways you can live your life. You can live your life sinking, you can live your life surviving, or you can live your life thriving. And I believe that this is a direct understanding of the scriptures. And I want to help you not just grow spiritually, but I want to help you grow personally as well. To be honest, this is a personal mandate of mine. And so I came to the team with this and I'm like, I want to help people thrive. And so I've gotten some coaching in this. Uh, I've been studying the scriptures. I got a short little intro teaching for you. And we'll see if this um, gets some feedback and some comments. But we want to hear from you today. As always, listen, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, hit that button below, please. And click the like button. It helps the algorithm. And I need all my electronic evangelists to shout us out, please, today. All right? This is going to help you a lot. Let's get into the teaching. So we're starting a series called Thrive. This will really be the introductory message to be able to help you grow, not just spiritually, but also personally. And here's where we're going to find ourselves is in a text in Luke chapter 2, verse 52. So for context, Luke chapter 2, verse 52, we'll, we'll throw the verse up on the screen. Understand something. Jesus is about 12, 13 years old. And in Luke chapter 2, verse 52, we hear this little sentence and it says this. And Jesus increased. Come on, somebody type in the comments. Say increased. Jesus increased in wisdom. He increased in stature. He increased in favor with God and in favor with man. So we see four key distinctions and four key ingredients here. Jesus increased. Listen, if Jesus has to grow, so do you. I'm going to say it again. And I'm going to say it with my chest, if Jesus has to grow, family, so do you. Now, the thing about this verse that's really interesting is verse 52. But then we go into John chapter 3, and we don't hear from Jesus until he's 30 years old. So from about 12 to 13 to 30 years old, we hear absolute silence and we hear absolutely nothing about Jesus's life. So this is the last verse that we hear for about anywhere between 17 to 18 years of his life. It's complete silence. And the last detail we get is Jesus grew. And how did he grow? He grew in wisdom. He grew in stature. What's that? That's your physical. That's personal. He grew in favor with God. That's spiritual. And he grew in favor with man. So wisdom, intellectual, stature, physical, uh, favor with God, spiritual, and favor with man, relational. So here's, here's the thought for today. Here's a quick little thesis is listen to me. If you say you are spiritually mature and you're not growing emotionally, you're not growing personally, you're not growing relationally, you're not growing. We have to understand that there is a holistic growth about this. So spiritual maturity relates and is associated with emotional maturity as well. And so Jesus didn't just grow spiritually, favor with God. He also grew in wisdom. He grew in his intellect. Come on, we all have to upgrade our minds. Our mindset is so important and it's so key. Uh, he grew physically. So not just this isn't just referencing the fact that he, as a 13 year old boy, grew from, you know, four foot seven to about six foot two. No, that's not just that direct reference. He grew in his emotions. He grew personally. He grew in his heart health. Um, how many know heart work is hard work? So he did all these things and he grew in all this holistic way and he had a balanced growth. Now, if you want to thrive, you need to understand something. You need to know just you need to know more than just scripture. You also need to have some wisdom. You need to grow not just spiritually in your theology, but probably also in your ideology and your philosophies as well. So we have to grow holistically. And this is an interesting concept because a lot of times churches will just kind of primarily communicate to the morality of a person or the morality of a man or a woman. And God doesn't just want you to be a good person. Write this down in your notes. God doesn't just want you to be a good person. He wants you to live a good life. I think that is so important. We want... We want people in our church to not just live right because there is a right way and there is a wrong way to live. There is key scriptures. There are key ingredients in the text that just communicate that there is a right way and a wrong way. He doesn't just want you to live right, though. He wants you to live well. And I don't know about you, but I want to thrive. I don't just want to sink. I don't want to just survive living paycheck to paycheck, you know, hoping that this relationship is going to work out. No, I believe there are principles in scripture that we're going to highlight through this series that is really going to help you to thrive. And here's a, here's a thought and here's a question for today is this. Does anybody else like me get frustrated when somebody says, oh, you got so much potential. 
<laughs> oh my god whenever i hear somebody say dev you have so much potential whenever i heard that as a kid oh man it was such a trigger thing for me because i heard it so often now, i'm a pastor's kid mom and dad are the lead pastors they know scripture they counsel counselors they're you know they're the they're the ideal marriage for a lot of people and i'm not saying that they're perfect they are not but i'm saying for my whole life people like they see my dad and they would associate Derek Fry with Devin Fry, and Devin Fry is down here, and he's got to grow. And Dev, you got so much potential, but uh, that's how I always heard it. Whenever somebody said you got so much potential, I always heard the but right afterwards, and it was so frustrating to me. So, I created this message for people like that. If if I'm talking to you today, the question is, how do you reach your potential? What do you have to do to get to that place? Hopefully, hopefully, I'm making sense here today. What do you have to do to reach your potential? And I want to give you four key ingredients. Uh, one of my coaches, he calls this the four Q leader. I want to give you four key ingredients that I think will help you reach and identify your potential. It's found in Luke chapter two, verse 52. Jesus grew in wisdom, stature, favor with God, favor with man. He grew holistically. He didn't just grow spiritually. I think there are a lot of Christians out there today where they love God and they claim to love God, but their life is a hot mess. And I think this is a foolish way to live because this is not a great representation of Christ to humanity. I think if you want to be a great representation of Christ to humanity, understand something. Jesus isn't just the way to heaven. He also shows you the way to heaven on earth. He is not just your savior. He's also your example. I'm preaching fire right now. Throw some fire in this chat. Okay. I want to hear from some of you today. We need to grow in four key areas. And here's these four key areas. Okay. Ready? Number one, we need to grow in our spiritual maturity. Now, this is not to say you should not grow in spiritual maturity. This is not what this teaching is. You should grow in your spiritual walk and your spiritual development. Now, some of us, Hebrews talks about this. Some of us at this point in stage in our life, some of us should be able to teach scripture, but we still can't even read scripture. Family, friends, I need to tell you, you got to grow in your faith. There comes a point in your life where, listen, you can't blame mom and dad you can't blame, I didn't have a church upbringing. You can't blame all these other things. At some point, you need to take responsibility for your life in spiritual maturity. I'm going to show you a scripture. In time, we're going to break this scripture down because I think there's so much meat to it. But I'm going to give you a brief little synopsis of what the scripture says. Galatians chapter 4, verse 1. Okay. Hopefully you guys are all right and you're with me. Galatians chapter 4, verse 1. If you want to thrive, watch this. The Bible says in Galatians chapter 4. I mean that the heir, as long as he's a child, so watch this. So there's an heir in this text, and then they relate this heir, uh, heir to the throne. So say this is a prince or, or a princess. So you have a king, you have a queen, you have a prince and a princess. The heir would be the prince or the princess. There is an heir, but as long as he is a child, a child in this te text is a metaphor. It's a metaphor for immaturity. So watch. There is an heir, and as long as the heir is a child, they are no different than a slave. Powerful. Though the date set by his father. In the same way we also, or sorry, but he is under guardians and managers until the date set by his father. In the same way we also, when we were children, again, a metaphor for immaturity, were enslaved to the elementary principles of this world. Here's what this text is saying. Is there are some promises of God that will never be obtained or attained if you are spiritually immature. So some promises of God are reserved for grown folks. And I need you to know that some of you guys are not walking into the abundance of life because you're spiritually immature. We have to grow in spiritual maturity. That's going to be week one. We're going to talk about this, this next thrive teaching spiritual maturity. Number two, you need to have, if you're going to thrive to reach your potential, you need to have spiritual maturity. Number two, emotional mastery, emotional mastery. Now, I think what happens in church settings sometimes is this, is we will suppress our emotions. And there is any, God does not speak that at all. It's sometimes we just deny, it, or we, we call this faithing it. It's some people just faith it. Listen, faith does not deny reality. It just acknowledges God saying he can change it. I'm going to say that again. Faith does not deny reality. It's not to say you didn't get a diagnosis or you have a sickness or you have a disease. But we some, so we've seen some people where... They will deny the fact that anything wrong or bad is even happening in their life. God wants you to thrive, but you have to not suppress your emotions. You have to confront your emotions. Oh, Lord, God, I'm preaching right now. You got to confront your emotions. So here's a, here's a note I wrote down is this. My greatest gift to you is a healthy me. My greatest gift to you is a healthy me. The greatest gift you can give to the world, the greatest gift you can give to your spouse, the greatest gift you can give to your team, to your church, to your community, to your job. The greatest gift you can give them is a healthy you. 
And so stop. How do I want to say this? Stop leaving unaddressed pain to sabotage your life. You have to confront some of the demons, some of the trauma, some of the abuse, some of the neglect that you've experienced in your life. You've got to face them. So some of you guys need a counselor. Some of you guys just need to talk with your small group leader. Some of you just need to go to the altar after church on a Sunday and just get prayer. I'm telling you, emotional mastery is going to be required if you are going to thrive. And again, we're going to talk about this in week two, emotional mastery, how to manage and master your emotions. We, we hear this a lot in like uh, NASA settings and, you know, space settings is, is uh, motion control. Well, I want to talk about emotion control. And I think we, we have to have and master that ability, not to suppress emotions, but to master emotions. So number one, spiritual maturity. Number two, emotional mastery. Number three, relational management. Relational management. Um, I think people do relationships on accident and not intentionally a lot nowadays. And I wonder why you see so much pain and, and abuse or neglect is I'm so passionate about this. And we talk a lot about this in our church setting. But the reason I'm so hard on dating with some of our church family and listen to me, I'm, I'm talking to our, our community right now. The reason I'm so hard on dating is because I've seen what not putting in the hard work in dating does. And then you go into marriage and you have a miserable marriage just because people aren't divorced doesn't mean they're not miserable, by the way. And so I've seen a lot of marriages where they are they are still living in the same house. But my wife and I counsel far too many people for us not to be hard on, on dating, because if you're hard in dating and you go um, you go strong with those relational principles, put people through testing. I'm just telling you, you're, you go hard in the beginning. It'll be easier later. But if you're easy in the beginning, it'll be harder later. And friend and family, we just got to have strong standards that we're going operating off of. But we need to have proper relational management. And that's not just for romantic relationships. That's for platonic relationships as well. But you want to thrive. It's going to require number one, spiritual maturity. Number two, emotional mastery. Number three, and we're concluding, relational management. And number four, you need a leadership mindset. A leadership mindset. I think if you want to grow, if you want to thrive, listen to me. The Bible says this. The harvest is plenty, but the workers are few. Meaning, if God wants to do something great in the earth, he sees a harvest, he sees souls being prepared, he has a, an abundance of people that can be helped and, and, and healed. But what does he do? He raises up a leader. And so I'm telling you, if you keep watching these podcasts, if you get into the church, if you give us three months, six months, nine months to a year, I'm telling you, we can pull the leader out of you. And I want you to grow in three areas. Ready? Here's my last thought. I want you to grow in these three areas. And I believe this is my assignment. And this is what my coach has taught me. And honestly, I'm just adopting this. And this has become a mission statement for me. I want you to grow, number one, your influence. I want you to grow, number two, in your impact. And I want you to grow, number three, in your income. How many could use another dollar? Come on, everybody. I want you to grow in influence, impact, and income. Influence. That's the ability to be able to uh, influence people, persuade people towards God pur God's purposes. Not your preferences, but God's purposes. Impact. Knowing that what you do and the work of your hands are making an impact in people's lives and it can change people's lives forever. I am so grateful for the work I get to do. I'm so grateful for the team that I'm surrounded by right now that's filming me because we have five, six, seven people that are working on this podcast just to get it into your hands so that it can impact your life. And people in this room don't get paid for this. I know some of them are like, yeah, we don't. <laughs> your great is your reward in heaven, team, okay? People, people don't get paid for this, but they want to do something that matters. And so we're not giving people a salary here. We're giving people significance. And I think everybody here wants to have their life matter. So impact, uh, influence, impact, and then income. I believe that you can get money, not so that you can use money to just uh, well up pleasure, although I don't think that's wrong. But I believe you can use money so that you can make a difference and you can be in the middle of your purpose. Money creates movement. It creates freedom. And so if you listen to this series, again, three ways you can live your life, sinking, surviving, or thriving. If you want to thrive, well, friend, you're going to need number one, spiritual maturity. Number two, emotional mastery. Number three, relational management. And number four, a leadership mindset. Here's what I want to do. I want to give you some homework as we dismiss. I want you, before we release this next Thrive teaching, first of all, I need you to like this video. I need you to subscribe to this channel. And give me some comments. What are some things that you want to talk about? What are some things maybe in the four quadrants that I mentioned that you want to hear from? But here's your homework assignment. I want all of you to read the entire book of Proverbs this next month. So there's about 31 Proverbs. You can do one chapter a day, but take your time. And at the end of reading the book of Proverbs, whether you do it in a laptop, in a journal, or in your Bible directly, 
I want you to write out the five key themes that you see in the text. What do you see repeated multiple times? And I think the Proverbs will help you live a life that you love. I hope this video helped. God bless you. Let's work on all four of those areas. Spiritual maturity, emotional mastery, relational management, and a leadership mindset. And I'm telling you, you're going to thrive.